Hello, my name is Anthony Madonna. I'm an Apollo engineer, and uh, I debt to continue the other video I had, the first part, with this one. I'll be using the same photos, but uh, presenting a different item. Um, what happened is I got promoted to uh, engineering from, after being a technician for like six years on the Apollo program. And I worked worked on almost all the different pieces of equipment, and the the bird and seal beach and Saturn II, and I was actually promoted there into the uh, RF group, the communications group, and we were uh, involved in that particular group was involved with with uh, GSC consoles and keeping them uh, up to date. Most of the uh, consoles were already uh, completed, and uh, we were just making changes. Uh, but for example, uh, the one console I was assigned with was Mike Yukos, was his console. He was the uh, uh, responsible engineer on it, and I was his, uh, I guess, his helper. And they assigned me to do some things on it because I had a lot of testing experience. And they had me do some of the things like they had, they were having the power that was uh, overdriving the system, and they were uh, coming in from the RF uh, amplifier, so I. I put a clipper on it and that, it calmed it down. It it worked fine. Anyway, the engineers, uh, being an engineer is a lot different than being a technician. Uh, the technicians, you get to, you set up the equipment, you come in each day, and your day is done when you're done with uh, that day. Engineers are different, that they come in and they'll assign you uh, f several job projects that you have to do within maybe a week or a month. And uh, they'll, they'll pile on your desk and you're responsible for getting these jobs done on, on a timely order. And there's usually a, a deadline on all these. Uh, there's a schedule you have to com comply with. And uh, uh, after the week is completed, we are re required to make a uh, write a report of what we did. And uh, like, uh, for instance, I, I initiated the uh, clipper, uh, clipper uh, correction and uh, I would have to write about what I did and and make a presentation too. I'd have to go t into the conference room and make a presentation of some of these items I'd worked on. Everybody had to do it, just not me. And uh, we had uh, some of the big shots from the, the uh, company would come would be there and be listening to us too. So um, it, it was uh, like Dale uh, Myers was there and some other times. He's a fellow that had, Engineers, you can recognize him because he he has a, a patch over his eye. He'd injured with his eyes during testing or something. But anyway, he was one of them, and we had uh, some of the head of the potentials of the program would come in there. Uh, sometimes even the vice president would drop in. So there was a lot of pressure on us. You had to make, you had to be sure what you're going to do and what you're going to say. And your supervisor was always hammering on you too. They wanted to make sure that you look good because if you look good, they look good. So it was that was the way it was there. Um, I had to learn how to organize my my stuff because that I had a mess in my desk. I didn't know how to put things. Away. My boss came over and asked me to for a specific project, and I didn't know I didn't have it all. I couldn't find it. So the first thing he says, "Why don't you get organize your your file and make it correct?" Uh, we don't want when I ask you something, I want it right away immediately. So what I did. I spent a f few hours getting that all straightened up. Uh, one of the guys that came in, a uh, fellow, uh, I think his name was Nishimoto, he came in, he was an electronics guy like me, but he came from this, uh, he was really sharp, had a lot of uh, engineering, engineering type electronics, and he knew how to design very well, and they wanted him to do, uh, there was a rule there that you had to use the things that were uh, 10 years old, or proven, or 5 years old, so that had to be proven that it worked in the space program. Um, and he said to come to use, he wanted to use operational amplifiers, and uh, he, they wanted to use transistors, which is, you know, way obsolete. So um, he would make his pro design, he made the, the operational opera uh, amplifier, and he design, and designed a project he was working on, he had it done in a day. So for several months later, they kept trying hammering him to try to get this transistor thing to work. So in this um, weekly report, he would put down no significant progress. I thought it was pretty funny, but the boss didn't like that at all. But he said, 
what can he do? He says the technology to try and do this was obsolete. So uh, it was, uh, and the proper way to do is we use the, the correct uh, uh, components. So anyway, I got into, uh, when I left uh, uh, engineering, I w got into facilities. And facilities a little different uh, organization. You don't have that weekly reports and whatever. They give you a design desk and you're a design engineer. And these are some of the guys I work with, like John Perry. They were excellent guys. They helped train me. And Rod Cavanaugh, he was the electrical engineer for the for the company for, for facilities. And uh, Walter Bloom, he was my section leader. Now, we call them lead men when, uh, when you're a craft person, like a technician. But when you're an engineer, they call them section leaders. And we would get together and uh, have a meeting that was just uh, uh, make a... Uh, have a, a group to, uh, and uh, do a project. They would get, have electrical, mechanical, structural, and architect, or whatever needed to, to get that project done for the building. So uh, they, the, the head of that group would be called a job captain. And we'd go out in the field, take a look at as a, a group, and take a look and see what there was going on. But anyway, I thought I'd give you a little function, some of the functions that the engineers did at the, on the Apollo program and when I got in the facility, which was actually the space shuttle program. When the Apollo program was completed, the strange thing that happened was our, our facilities, we moved those people out and uh, we moved into Building 6 on the second floor. And we stayed there for a long time and then we moved to Seal Beach. But I thought it was kind of odd that we went back to the same building it was when I was a, a GSC engineer. So anyway, thank you for watching my video and goodbye.